From mid-century to contemporary, public to private, we're in search of the very best in art. Homes, happenings, stores, restaurants and people. Things that defy categories. The perpetual freshness and cool of modern never ceases to captivate us. Join us for another edition of Modern Dallas TV to discover what's going on and where in the modern world. It's the holiday edition of the Dallas Modernist Meetup, December 13th, 6 to 8 p.m., hosted by Scott Pluscuna in the Dallas Design District. RSVP on Facebook at Dallas Modernist Meetup, and we'll see you there. Modern Dallas Real Estate this week is in Frisco. We're at the Starwood Development at one of the few modern contemporary homes and one of the beautiful parts of this home great curb appeal and you pull up under the quarter cachet and you meet Noe De Leon from Identity House Real Estate. Noe, wow, what an entrance. It is, it's an amazing uh, home. And as soon as you walk in, you're invited to a circular living area and then you have a marble staircase and an incredible dining area that's just really expansive with soaring ceilings. More importantly, the home has a master bedroom to buy to die for. Um, the master suite is extremely private. The first floor, it's a two-story master suite, and the first floor you have a living area, as well as a fireplace, and then the master bath with a very large closet. Upstairs, you actually have the bedroom area, as well as a half bath, and have great views of the outside. That's the one side of the house. That's correct. Then tell us a little bit about the other lower portion of the house. So as you uh, continue to go through the property on the first floor, you have an incredible double island uh, kitchen uh, that overlooks a sunken uh, living area that also has great views of the outside. Behind the living area, you have the home theater. The home theater steps down into two rows of uh, leather reclining seats. It's an incredible home theater, have lots of fun, great sound. And as you walk upstairs, you have a living, dining, game room with a bar that's really great for large parties. And then on top of that, there is a fitness center um, that's available on the property that's a little over 500 square feet with state-of-the-art equipment. So you can certainly have your personal trainer come to you. And with all that said, there's a lot of features and benefits in this house. Give us a sense of what they are. So the home is equipped with a whole home audio system. So you're able to listen to different sounds in different rooms or the same music throughout the whole house. It also has perimeter security cameras in the home to make it safe. And then lastly, the one feature that I think is the center of the home <laughs> is the swimming pool. <laughs> it is, it is. And the swimming pool is actually located in the center of the home. Um, so that you have great views of the pool from all different parts of the home. Uh, you have three balconies that overlook the pool. Uh, the pool is also equipped with the jacuzzi uh, and great uh, entertaining space all throughout. And the house is listed for? $2,227,000. And they can find it on your website at? IdentityHouseRealEstate.com. And if you want to see all the modern listings in Dallas, visit our website at ModernDallas.net. Thanks, Noe. Thank you. This week is here at Samuel Lynn Galleries to see the work by international acclaimed sculptor John Henry. John, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. You know, your work, this is you. When I look at this piece, now I finally know who created it. But you've got an interesting journey. I mean, this just didn't start out uh, this great piece that we have in downtown Dallas. Tell us a little bit about the background. Well, first let me say that it's a pleasure to be in Dallas really like coming here. Dallas has been very good to me. Um, I went to school uh, at the Art Institute of Chicago and I started there as a painter and um, very quickly realized that I was more suited to making sculpture and uh, my friends were all sculptors and I was only down in the sculpture department helping them solve their problems and uh, so I just started making sculpture and the 
paintings that I did were two-dimensional entrance pieces, if you will, into a three-dimensional environment. And so the transition was pretty simple, pretty easy. And so um, by 1970, I was making sculpture, actually a little earlier than that. And um, I started showing in galleries in uh, Chicago, New York, and uh, showing sculpture. No more paintings. <laughs> so, so with that said, you know, Teclan Sentinel is to us who you are in Dallas. We drive through downtown and we see this magnificent piece. But the Teclan side of it had an influence on you. Well, to really go back to really go back to the days in Chicago, Chicago had an influence on me, the architecture and um, the the constructivist environment, if you will, which. Constructivism comes out of Russia in 1910, 1911, 1912. But Chicago was kind of where the Bauhaus came from Germany and uh, really established Chicago as America's architecture city. And that was impressive to me. The big buildings like the Hancock Center and the Sears Tower at the time, they call it something else now. But those buildings were going up and I watched them going up as a student. And that was really impressive. And I started realizing if I could take some of the ideas that constructivists had really played around with, they only made models, they only made proposals because they didn't have the wherewithal. And the world wasn't at a place yet where there was monumentality to sculpture. Um, and so I wanted to play in that ballpark. So I started making pieces that were pretty large. And my earliest, one of my earliest sculptures was like 70 feet long. And it was shown on Michigan Avenue in Chicago. And I started to see how you work with architecture as a sculptor. And um, I was in some of the earliest monumental sculpture shows. And it was kind of funny because I was taking that seriously. And most artists weren't. I mean, they were hauling six foot high pieces of sculpture outside and crawling in a line on a sculpture show. Well, that wasn't what it was, obviously. So there were very few sculptors in this country at the time who were really participating as monumentality in relation to the architecture and where the pieces were being placed. So Sue wrote, myself, Alexander Calder, and you could, you could count on one hand the people who were really building anything over 20 feet. Wow. So it was an interesting time. So when you create a piece like this for downtown, mm -hmm. what is the impetus? What, what really gets you to that over 100 feet and, and really, in your mind, you think, this is a monument? Well, it all has to do with um, the relationship of the human scale to the environment where the human being Architects have known about, known about these things for years. Um, when you go into a big high-rise building, why is the door 20 feet high? They don't bring things through that door, and there's nobody that tall. But the, the door relates to the lobby, which is 40 feet high. And the, the reason the lobby is that tall is because the building is 400 feet tall. And so there's a relationship between all this, it all has to do with the human being and his relationship to scale and the way he feels when he walks into a high-rise building. And when you walk out of a high-rise building and you walk into a plaza, if there's a little piece of sculpture over on a, a pedestal somewhere, it's not very meaningful and doesn't really have anything to do with the transition of the scale in the environment of the city. So with that said, you go... You, collection of work is broad-based. You have this monumental, large, small pieces. You've obviously created some unique new pieces with a little bit more depth instead of height. Right. Is that a future? That's, that's just a, um, an evolution of the ideas. And, uh, you know, you, you get up so high, you start spreading out. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> But anyhow, um, no, the, 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 
The freshness of the idea is what I think keeps an artist going. If an artist has to go back and, and replow the same ground over and over and over again, then it's not very interesting. So, you have to keep pushing. Yourself. Absolutely. One of the great things that I actually love coming into the gallery is the bench. I think it's spectacular. What was the impetus for that? Well, that's the second bench that I built. The first one, uh, we built an addition of 12, and they, they all went out, and uh, we decided to build another one. But the, the original um, reason for building a bench was for a park site. And uh, the, they were asking for seating inside, and decided, why don't I try that? And it was fun. And it is fun, it's a great piece. And the second one was even more fun. So. Absolutely, what, what a great concert, what a great body of work, what a great career. I mean, it's unbelievable to think where you are today with these pieces from where you started. I, I saw one of the pieces made from wood yeah. originally. So, John, it's an absolute pleasure. You know, not too many times I meet somebody who's got a public Wikipedia so. <laughs> For that, I appreciate the opportunity. You can see the show here at Samuel and Galleries through December 23rd. And if you'd like to see more of John's work, it's at the uh, Hall Center downtown or at the Hall Park up in Frisco. Thanks, John. My pleasure. Pleasure. See you. Thank you. Thank you. To wrap up this edition of Modern Dallas TV, we cover local modern events and the art scene. Check out the calendar and the arts page on our website at moderndallas.net. There are always great events from the Dallas Architecture Forum, Preservation Dallas, and the Dallas Center for Architecture has great walking tours in downtown Dallas. Open houses every week, always a great selection. You can create your own mini mod home tour and Todd Camplin covers the art scene for us, from art galleries to museums and artists. You can check out his page on the website. And lastly, if you're in the market for a modern, mid-century modern, contemporary, home, high-rise or loft, we simply have the finest moderns in Dallas. For this week, we appreciate you being part of our show. We'll see you later.